Good evening, Philippines, and hello, world! Greetings to our participants who are with us tonight in this webinar from all around the world, streaming live from all available online platforms in partnership with various institutions and organizations from all around the world. Welcome to our Institution of Global Professionals free webinar. We thank you all for joining us tonight, and we do hope that you will stay with us until the end of this session. I am truly honored to be back for the third time and thankful to be your host for tonight. I am Aljor Mordeno Isgeva, a public secondary school teacher, Master of Arts in Education, major in English degree holder from Sinubong Varela, Agusan del Sur, Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be associated with IGP as a global member. I am grateful and honored to be given such privilege in hosting this webinar. On behalf of the IGP, I welcome you all to tonight's webinar. I am sure that all of us will learn great things from tonight's webinar, which I believe would create a large-scale impact in all aspects of our community. Trust me, your time spent with us tonight will be fruitful as we have prepared a topic that is indeed timely and relevant to our context, which will be delivered by our speaker of caliber. As we continue to aim for quality and excellence, share the knowledge and this great source of information by saying something about this organization. And of course, you are also given the opportunity to comment on your comment section via YouTube. Also, to those who are using Facebook as their platform, do not forget to tag, share, and mention your friends. Let us all watch and learn together as we in IGP stands firm and believe that fitting our skills will lead to innovation, inspire people, and create impact towards a more sustainable and better society. Once again, this is Alger Mordeno Isguera, a proud member of IGP from the Philippines and your host for tonight. Every day, our community continues to grow as an organization and as a family who loves to share, learn, and expand their knowledge along with the great topics that we provide every session. Institution of Global Professionals serve as a community resource by providing holistic social work and education to build a much more proficient generation, leading to a greater and brighter community and world. IGP is the leading online skill development institute, which provides thousands of learners worldwide knowledge. And we use various platforms also to cascade information and make it accessible to use for every knowledge seeker to build a personality, be more ambitious, promote confidence, and develop skills to surpass the hurdles of life. Thus, as we in, are interested with international recognition, we have already successfully conducted 387 sessions, which makes this our 388. I believe the numbers would testify the IGP's credibility, validity, and competence. And of course, competence. We strongly believe that our participants are getting the best information to better their personal and professional life as we wish to see you in our future sessions. With this, let me remind you again and give emphasis. Do not forget to share, tag, comment, and mention your friends in the comment box because your active participation will contribute to our burning passion to do better and deliver the best and quality service to you, our lovely audience. Without further ado, today we are presenting the 388 webinar with the topic, Occupational Health and Safety. Let us start our program with the IGP's mantra or what IGP stands for. Can you write it down using your comment section on your YouTube platform? Let us see. There you have it with IGP, hashtag feed your skills. Our speaker of caliber for tonight is a TVET expert, HOD in government of poor job educational department and writer of vocational and technical books. Help me welcome with our virtual applause with his topic on occupational health and safety, our speaker of tonight, or for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Engineer Muhammad Wamek Ayaz. Your virtual applause, please. Thank you so much, dear. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, 
dear participants thank you so nice of you thank you so much uh, today our lecture is occupation health and safety hello did you hear me yes sir we can hear you sir okay okay sir please uh, my name is Injira Mohammed Bamekeas. I am from Pakistan. Today I am delivering the lecture about occupational health and safety. Occupational health and safety is almost common for all of us because uh, it's a uh, environment, it's a uh, technical environment, and according to technical environment, that is also necessary for us to learn about occupational health and safety. That's why today I am telling you about occupational health and safety. I am uh, sh sharing with the screen. Uh, can you please share the screen, sir? Yes, sir. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, party friend. Uh, today, our lecture is occupational health and safety. I am technical expert in occupational health and safety and uh, today I'm telling you about occupational health and safety. What is occupational health and safety? Occupational health and safety is the combination of three names. One is occupation, the second one is health, the third one is safety. Occupation. Occupation means simply either you are engineer, you are doctor, you are industrialist or any something yes yes sir. Uh, your profession is some other field that is called occupation health health related to your internal organs or a different type of your internal issues oh, no 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 please okay sorry just a disturbance in mic please that is the combination of three names. One is occupational, the second one is health, and the third one is safety. Occupational, health, and safety. Uh, just you see the pictures, occupations. In occupation, we have different ways. These are, if you are engineer, you are doctor, you are any somewhere else working in any type of industry. That is your occupation. Health, health related to your internal organs or safety related to your external organs basically uh, health and safety are closely related but not the same thing we discuss it and further occupation health and safety a combination of three words occupation health and safety o stand for occupation occupation means your job your work your expertise your organizations in which you are working, in which field you are working, in your surrounding or in your industry or in your environment, that is called your occupation. I stand for health. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, social well beings, and or merely the absence of diseases or infirmity. That is also called the absence of disease, ill, and stress. Like it is the absentees of uh, different diseases or illness or stress that is called health and uh, S stand for safety. Safety is a condition of being safe from undergoing or cause hurt, injury or loss. A device process to operate used to prevent inadvertent or hazardous operations. That is called safety. Safety and health are closely related but is not the same thing. One views that safety is concerned with injury causing situations, whereas health is concerned with diseases causing condition. Another view is that safety is concerned with hazards to human that result to certain severe conditions. Health deal with adverse reactions to prolong the exposure of dangers or less hazards. Both of these views are generally accurate in portraying the difference between health and safety. However, the line between these two concepts is not clearly marked. For example, Stress is a hazard that can cause both psychological and physical problems over a prolonged period of time. In case 
in other case uh, yeah in this case this is health concern matter on the other hand the overly stressed worker might be more prone to unintentionally forget safety precautions and thus might cause an accidents in this case stress is a safety concern matter that's so simple that the line between these two concept is not clearly marked safety and health is through closely related thing since manager in this involving profession are likely responsible for both professions health and safety it is important that they have a broad academic background covering the safety and health so the majors in this professions yeah the workers in this professions are really empowered about both the things health and safety so coming to the next the next one is occupational health and safety occupational health and safety deal with all respects of health and safety in the workplace and has a strong focus on primary preventions of hazard its goal to prevent accidents and harm to people from work related activities or injuries or any of the other conditions that directly related to health and safety reason for an occupation health and safety prompts why we will pick these prompts the use of machines and chemical has rapidly expanded in this century consequently the risk of health and safety has increased with this machinery electricity on construction sites or in agriculture all have several hazards to health and safety and there is always the risk of fires to be occurred in the workplace it is not only chemical agent which can cause occupational disease and illness physical agents such as noise vibrations heat lightning can be hazards to health and safety in order to avoid these hazards there is need to develop occupational health and safety plan that is necessary uh, for us today in industrial environment accident and work related illness will have obvious cost effects on the organization that is a extra burden is effect on us this include loss of output due to the workers being unavailable for the work the cost of medical treatment for those who suffer injuries or illness administration cost incurred by the firms government departments and so on will also create a hazard to us or financial loss for us these are the social and personal cost of accidents the cost of occupational injuries in terms of financial losses and social personal cost of injured workers and their families are not acceptable and a great deal of effort is required to bring down accidents and injuries rate that is extra cost for, for us so we should put efforts to bring it to down and as well as realize that if they don't look after their major resources their people they are going to suffer that's why uh the occupation health and safety is so much necessary for us there is a probability of benefits to managing health and safety companies with outstanding safety performance are usually leader in their fields when it's come to profit and quality productivity prof profitability quality and excellence in health and safety go hands to these companies are the leading companies of today industries for example frequent accidents and dangerous incidents seriously erode established quality standards and procedures we can't take that company that has too much accidental ratio or their background is too much accidental scenario related we put that firm that has a serious type of rules regulations regarding occupational health and safety that's why we are Uh, mostly focusing on occupation health and safety and in western uh, uh, in western companies and in western uh, practical environmental industries mostly they are focus on occupation health and safety that's why they are to my succeed rather than us let's forward to the next points the next point is uh, the next slide is occupation safety tip what is occupational health and safety uh what should we should be de deal in occupational health and safety 
the first thing is be aware what is occupational health and safety maintain correct postures first we, we should look after on uh, uh, be aware what is be aware be aware is always be alert to what happen in your surrounding remember that your safety uh, that your safety is your responsibilities understanding the particular hazards related to your job or workplace and keep clear to potentially hazardous areas situations be awake and alternatives on the jobs and particularly aware of machines avoid going to works under influence of alcohol or drug or any hazardous related activities which can compromise your concentrations coordinations judgments or controls or alertness or other type of hazards related hazardous activities maintain correct posture that is the second option so the second point sorry use correct postures to protect your back while it works if you sit at the desk keep your shoulders and hip in your lines and avoid hunching upwards use correct form when lifting objects and avoid twisting and stopping the following tips provide information about lifting correctly that is called a manual lifting manual safe lifting operations if if you sure uh, if you do that uh, manual lifting in proper position that is not a hazardous or risk uh, creative for you that is a safe activity for you the third one is take break regularly that is too much necessary for us that is a key point for whole employees and employees especially if they are working in uh, too much hectic routine that is necessary for him uh take break regularly feeling tired and burned out make you less likely to be aware of your surrounding and is common cause of workplace injuries regular break a break help you to stay fresh and alert on the job you you are full for your full focus is on your job if you are taking your proper break it is particularly important to take short break when you have a toss that require repetitive movements over a long period of time that is too much necessary for you so break is so much necessary in occupation especially if you are promoting your occupation health and safety that break is a key point so keep in mind break is necessary the, the fourth one is use equipment properly that is also a key point for occupation health and safety always take a proper precautions when operating machines are using tools take shortcuts it is leading cause of workplace injuries or illness or sick related activities use appropriate tools for the jobs and use it in the right way when using tools and machines put safety first with the following tips only use those machines where you are trained and authorized and you have license to use it you can use these machines and you know how to use that machines then you uh, you should use it otherwise uh, they can uh, they can create uh, risk for you keeping tool clean and good working orders organize tools away returns them their proper places or in their catalogs boxes make sure the machines operator see you don't approach from the blind spots or from the blind corners from the blind edges from the blind positions or the hidden positions don't approach them from any type of hidden source only perform tasks you have been properly trained to perform never leave machinery unattended while it is running especially uh, that there's great a uh, high type of risk for you and that is a dangerous for you always obey operation instructions uh, that is too much favorable for you if you uh, you can follow the instructions you can easily use the machines or different types of tools never remove or temper the safety guards guards should be placed in their own points don't nail it or trumpet or don't hurt the guard 
<coughs> if someone stream wrong, immediately stop the machines and get assistance. Communicate with those around you. Avoid buddy systems. Communicate with your surrounding. Communicate with your partners. Communicate with your friends. That is also a key point. Never walk in front of the heavy equipment while they are working or in stopping position. Read and follow the label and instructions display on the boards, machines, tools, or heavy objects. Don't tamper with hazardous items, including cords, switches, electrical controls, panels. We as appropriate and compact clothes, loose, bellows, clothes, or accessories can easily get the fires or catch of uh, different type of hazards. Never place finger into uh, other objects into moving machines or in a moving part of machine. One of the equipment before moving clean, adjusting, soiling or other type of oiling or jumping. That is also uh, equipment related safety point. The sixth point which we are following right now, that is local emergency exit. LEE. -E. LEE -E is the key point. And Local emergency exit should maintain properly in whole industries or institutions or different areas where we walk, where we work, where we are living. Emergency exit should be properly maintained. Always know where emergency exit is located and keep the path to them clear. You should also have clear access to emergency shut off of the machineries that is easy a reach of you the sixth which we are discussing is report safety concerns matters your safety concerns issues if you are notice a potential safety hazards or risk report it to your supervisors or your managers or your engineers immediately so that they can address the situations Keep communications lines open and work as in terms to create a safe working environment. The seventh point is practice effective housekeeping. Housekeeping is so much necessary in industries or in working conditions or in working environment or at the workplace. Maintain a clean and organized workplace environment. Make housekeeping and ongoing objects that everyone is involved at the and keep them in a tips in mind these tips should be necessary for you like these tips are preventive tips slip to fall them keeping all floors clean and dry slippage hazards always exist where you are walking where you are moving if the floor is slippery that creates a hazard for you or it's create a risk or danger for you Eliminate fire hazards by removing combustible materials and restoring the flammable materials away from the source of ignition. Control dust accumulations in a proper channel, proper place, proper accumulated area. Avoid tracking materials and cross contaminations by keeping mat clean and heavy separate cleaning protocols for different areas. Use appropriate procedures to prevent falling objects, especially preventive falling equipment or preventive falling uh, tools. High type of risk for you. Keep the work culture free, the work area free, and the work area should be clean. The work area should be totally separate from pedestrians. The work area should be separate from vehicles. There is no vehicle or tries to enter in that area. Use appropriate procedures for prevent falling objects. Keep the work culture free. Store all materials and equipment properly at their places and catalogs. Regularly inspect the personal protective equipment and mark and make sure they are good in working order. PPE key role in your organization. The next one is the number eight point is 
mechanical aids instead of manual handling mechanical aids today our industries are 99% use machines the workplace with humans a different type of other source is almost finished right now mostly our industries are totally focusing on machines and they are using machines for different procedures or different operations so mechanical handling activity is totally finished right now oh sorry uh, manual handling activity is totally finished right now mechanical activity is totally in that uh, in today's market so that's why we should focus on mechanical handling activities take the extra time to obtain the wheelbarrows cranes conveyors belts forklifts or other mechanical aids to assist your lifting heavy objects attempting to lift someone that is too heavy can cause injuries and that could have been avoided mechanical handling aid related activities should be totally safe operating procedures and it should be clearly marked in their in their areas spe specifically their related tools equipments procedures should be clearly displayed reduce workplace stress that is our nine point stress stress is too much common for our psychological point of view that is a health concern matter the other most uh, mostly points are safety concern matter but uh, the stress is mostly related to health stress can contribute to difficulty concentrating and depressions which makes it hard to be alert at the works there are many causes of stress at the works like conflict with others like uh, injustice harassment obligations anger favoritism heavy work load long hours job insecurity if you are experience in uh, work stress like in your supervisors about the way to address your concern associate managers or your supervisor or your engineer to avoid that or to solve your problem the number 10 step is use appropriate safety equipment it is important to use proper safety equipment especially working on some work task to help to protect yourself from injuries either it is a form of internal source or external source some guidelines are necessary for the works to use ppe like wear appropriate clothes like overall life jackets safety aprons fire dress are different types of aprons are different types of chemical are different type of chemical hazard related uh, dresses overalls aprons use proper safety shoes for your task at the workplace either you have the risk of chemical or wet so your shoes should be totally plasticized material if you have the risk related to your uh, heavy objects falling on your feet then you should use proper shoes like these are the safety shoes you should know the locations at the fire extinguishers and where the fire first aid kit is located you know the place of fire extinguisher and the first aid kit use specifically design hard hat if there is a risk of falling objects at your workplace exist proper hard head is necessary for you at that place if there is risk of crushing or restraining injuries exist we are proper and appropriate gloves when handling toxic substances or sharp objects specifically hot parts of machineries heavy parts of machineries moving parts of machineries are equipment used you should use proper gloves in these type of equipment wear glasses and goggles when there is a risk exists to your eyes from flying particles from flying chips or somewhere else uh, dust or related particles that could create a hazard or risk to your eyes then you should use 
glasses and goggles use safety harness if there is a danger of fall especially uh, working at or above 1.5 meter height we are not are adjustable sturdy shoes when working on slippery surface or lifting heavy objects that is also necessary for you wear respirators then there is the risk of harmful air or difficulty in your breathing like specifically there are uh, there is a clear difference between mask and respirators mask we should use different type of mask like dust mask we should use surgical mask and respirators we have different type of respirators like self contained breathing apparatus scba apr air purifying respirator p a p r power air purifying respirators and oxygen cylinders mask can't solve your problems totally mask have normal capacity to draw down the problems uh, to draw down the different type of hazards otherwise mask is not proper for you specifically in covid uh, pandemic mostly people relies on mask the mask is not appropriate for them if you are uh, totally looking at mask that is not favorable for you but as compared with breathing apparatus a mask breathing apparatus is better than a mask because it may all it may not be permit any harmful material to absorb or contact in your leather system use all protective equipments intended to your task including seat belts body harness protectives headgears or clothing and safety glasses either it should be full body systems or you should use all the systems in your proper ppe structure ppe is essential is essential according to health and safety or and uh, then we are talking about occupation health and safety ppe is so much important in occupation so uh, keeping in mind ppe is the main point of occupation health and safety each workers know about ppe and each employer will train their workers about ppe maintain uh, maintenance their procedures their uh, usage they should know each and everything about ppe ppe is the main point of occupational health and safety no uh, the next slide is occupational health and safety policy occupational health and safety policy uh an occupational health and safety policy is an employers written commitments to health and safety of both their employees and their workers there are two names in this point the one is employer the other one is employees employer should be a boss employer should be a client employer should be a firm and employees are workers the people who work the people who deal the people who our are doing the thing who are doing the thing these are employees or the workers which are working in the workplace good occupational health and safety policy would also reduce cost associated with workplace accidents injuries or illness if the occupational health and safety in the workplace is good you can manage your cost according to your budget according to your proper functions according to your proper planning you can manage it very well the next one is occupational health and safety program the previous one is occupational health and safety policy no we are on occupational health and safety programs safety cultures first there is a safety culture 
each employers and employees will totally focus on their health and safety in their surrounding in their workplace in their working environment in their offices there is a occupational health and safety prompts and and each employer and employee follow the total form employees trainings and empowerments hazard identifications and control systems focus on compliance continuous improvements leadership and organization goal safety managers role safety manager safety managers leadership the two last two points are totally related to employers the other points are related to employees employees are workers no we should look on that why is this the goal of occupation health and safety program the main goal is to eliminate the hazard to eliminate the risk to eliminate the danger to avoid the hazard to avoid the risk to avoid the danger control of hazard control of risk control of danger that is the main goal of health and safety the next one is method protocol review risk assessment sop standard operating procedure training accidents incidents reporting and investigation no we should look on that uh, look at that what is this risk assessment standard operating procedures training accidents incidents reporting and investigations what is this risk assessment identifying the hazard what is hazard what is risk you should know the label you should know the signs you should know the posters where it is located and what type of risk or what type of danger what type of hazard is created you should know about that the first one is chemical or flammable you know the symbol and you are watching on the screen that is a symbol of chemical flammable liquids or items uh, uh, where it is located you have to follow the procedures of chemical or flammability safety toxin there is a toxin symbol physical noise symbol or electrical symbol radiation symbol animal symbol or zone symbol allergy or infections or biological or rdna or pathogenic symbols these are the main symbols related to a risk assessment what is risk assessment first we should look on uh, risk assessment what is risk assessment when we are we will talk about hazard assessment there are two things one is assessment the other one is hazard hazard recognition the first is recognition what is hazard or what is risk <coughs> we should know <coughs> about recognition recognition a workplace hazard is the first step in overcoming it but health and safety hazard is, is not always obvious hazard recognition means identifying the potential hazard in the workplace identifying the adverse effects that may be associated with the workplace hazard determining whether there is a possibility uh, being followed or the people well that could affect the hazard that is the recognition there is, there are three steps to recognize the hazard or to recognize the hazard or danger or recognize uh, recognize the risk the next step is hazard assessment after recognition no we should forward on assessment assessment is finding
I think Sir Engineer is having some technical problems right now. If I am not mistaken, because on my screen, Engineer is no longer moving. Yes, Engineer, um, Engineer uh, Wamek, I said, I was experiencing, is ex currently experiencing technical difficulties. So while we are waiting for him to come back to our platform, we would like to encourage our dear participants who are with us right now to please continue on supporting Institution of Global Professionals or IGP by sharing the knowledge through www.eduigp.com and of course tagging, sharing it with your friends via Facebook and of course via various platforms that we have in our social media accounts. All right. And of course, earlier, if you have observed, we have um, posted or shown to you the different codes from the previous webinars that we have conducted. And you may be able to use uh, these codes to claim your e-certificates using the link being provided in our chat box or comment section via YouTube. And of course, upon um, entering or upon accessing our um, official website, the www.eduigp.com. You may be able to follow the instructions stated in our official website and claim the e-certificates that um, you have uh, to the particular webinars that you have participated that was conducted earlier this week. Um, if you have questions or clarifications, you can also email us. And of course, we would also like to encourage our participants who are with us tonight to also share your knowledge and your expertise in hosting and, of course, in speaking various topics that you are expert with by contacting our program management team, Sir Kamrul, and the rest of the team if you are, um, if you are interested to share the topics that you have. Again, in your areas of expertise, you may contact www.eduigp.com. Of course, our contact numbers and WhatsApp numbers are also being provided in our official website. While waiting again for Sir to come here, our e-certificates will be accessible by today or tonight for those webinars that were already conducted last uh, earlier this day or earlier this week, I stand corrected, you may access it now using the www.eduigp.com. And to those who are with us tonight, e-certificates will be provided also. Do not worry because our program management team is also doing their best to provide the quality service that all of us do deserve. Again, 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 we wish to encourage everyone who are with us tonight to please share this platform, share this institution of global professionals, because this is not just a series of webinar, but this is a community, a growing family of professionals who believe that knowledge, information, and by feeding our skills, we innovate things, we inspire people, and thus we create a large scale impact that could change not only our respective societies, but the world as a whole. Still, we are waiting for engineer Mohamed Wamek Ayas to come back to our platform. And we are also waiting for Sir Kamrul for further instructions and clarifications if there will be some announcements also to be done. As you can see right now in our screen, we have there the webinar title, the Drone Satellite and Rocket Technology Code, IGP3872, and another webinar titled Empowering Special Education Program with the Code, IGP7754. Another webinar, which also these um, the IGP code or the code is provided, is for advancing global competitiveness through home economics with the code IGP39. Five, seven, and the teaching style spectrum with the code IGP2876. All right. Now, of course, um, part of our um, endeavor is not just only to provide information, but also to provide extrinsic motivation to our participants who are continuously supporting the IGP by uh, participating in the webinars that we conduct every night, every week, or even every month 
Um, of course, we will be providing lifetime membership. We also have, you would like to congratulate Sir Nilo Mar Mercado. As, it, as part of our extrinsic motivation, we noticed that until the, this date, you have attended most of the sessions with us. And with this, we would like to share to you a lifetime membership certificate. Congratulations, Sir Nilo Mar. To those who are watching right now in their respective um, areas or countries, please do have a comment in our YouTube section for us to also recognize your participation in our webinar. All right. So, Mohamed Wajaz is now back with us. Engineer, you may now continue with your discussion, sir. Uh, sorry for the technical reason. That's why <clears throat> I left. Uh, Right now we are on that slide. Sorry for inconvenience. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about risk assessment. That is the main key point of uh, our occupational health and safety. The next one is standard operating procedure. What is standard operating? Designate hazard and their control, who to control the hazards. No, we are looking on elimination. Elimination or substitution of different type of hazardous materials. Engineers and facilities are designed to control or eliminate the hazards. There is also a administrative control. That is IH control. And uh, we should control it by further IH system. Then the fourth one is personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment. Uh, we are in uh, gloves, glasses, helmets. In that system, we uh, we should also consume. Uh, we, we also control it. Uh, we should also control standard operating procedure. The next one is training. What is training? Training is as for employer and employees training hazards disease signs symptoms of exposure chemical hygiene biosafety sops waste occupational hygiene emergency procedures employees and employees are trained in their professions what they are doing uh, simply we are going in somewhere we notice if we are trained, then we should deal the things very well. Otherwise, we are doing mostly wrong things or we are uh, on the wrong way. There are some few, uh, there are few points related to trainings, which we will discuss right now. These points are our training is too much necessary for us. If we train our our workers, our employees, they work very well. Our productivity increase, our quality, our proficiency also increase with the training. There is a survey related to training. I want to share with you the survey. Over 200 people are killed in each year in an accident at the works. And over 1 million people are injured. Over 2 million suffer illness caused by our, the uh, work they do. Preventing accidents and ill health causes the works is the key priority for everyone at the works. Providing health and safety information and training help you to ensure employees are not injured or make ill by the work they do. Develop a positive health and safety cultures. Find out how you could manage health and safety better. Next one is met legal duty to protect the employees' health and safety. According to training point of view, we should now keep in mind there are five steps of training we should need. Those are these steps are health and safety training procedure. The first step is Decide what training your organization need. If you need a training related to 
industry or in chemical industry then we train our employees according to chemical industry we can't tra train our employee according to construction industry identify the skill and knowledge and needed for the people to do their job in the safe and healthy way compare these against people's current skill and knowledge and identify the gaps review records experiences of injuries and emss or cases of health look at your assessment to see where training have been identified as factors of controlling the risk consult employees for their views the second step is training priorities decide what is the priority of your training top priority would include those whether lack of information and a training might result in serious harm and those with benefits the largest number of the workers consult employees for their views training for new recruits and for people training job or taking a new responsibility should always be a priority for everyone that is the main priority of your training the next one is choose training methods or resources which method which mode which resource you use for training choose your method for example giving from instructions on job training blind learning distance learning training in classroom open or distance learning training individual training or group wise group based training comprise based interactive learning training or consider who can help you by providing information material training course etc either it should be a, a occupation health and safety uh, team or occupation health and safety professional or occupation health and safety engineer or your company or your government representatives or government organization provide you a material information knowledge for the, that training the next one is deliver the training who deliver it is he competent is he know about all the training that is the main key point of trainer related activity ensure the information to understand and try to use a variety of training methods to deliver your message your method should be broad a huge data a vast data and progressive data ensure the trainers have enough time to prepare themselves trainer should be prepared according to their lecture their point of view he should be clear check that the training has worked that is the fifth step the main step of the training do the employee understand what is required for them employee no or they don't know do they know have the knowledge and skill needed to, for the work safely and without a risk of health and safety what feedback are you getting from the line managers and the people who have been trained are they actually working as they have been trained has there been an improvement in organization health and safety performance of or further information and the training needed like uh, uh, refresher training was the most suitable method of training is used it should be uh, according to uh, today's activity or according to uh, latest activity what improvement can be made by this training has there been a chance of behavior and practice it is important to keep record of training even in house training record should be manage properly you should monitor training records so that refresher training can given you when it is needed can't train the people two times three times four times if you can manage the record then it's good easily you can catch them or you can deal them according to refresher training the next one is accidents incidents investigation related activity no it's a record a record <coughs> no we are talking about incident accidents or records and investigation what is record what is accident what is incident 
what is their record keeping or reporting no we are working on that record keeping first we should look on uh, record keeping what is record keeping and reporting one of the breakthrough of osh act osh means occupation health and safety act that is 1970 act which is related to occupational safety and health act was centralization and systemization of record keeping this has simplifies the process of collecting health and safety statistics for the purpose of monitoring problems and taking the appropriate step to solve them employ one or more employees must maintain the record of occupational injuries and illness as they occur in their near misses or in their industry or in their normal environment the purpose of keeping records are to permit survey materials to be compiled that is a survey or assessment related to your surrounding environment uh, your surrounding incident and to inform employees of the status of their employer a record keeping employee inform about that record employee should also aware uh, aware about the record what is the record related to me the uh, employer are responsible for keeping employees informed about osh act and about the various safety and health matters with which they are involved all employees have the rights to examine any records kept by their employers regarding their exposure to hazardous materials or the results of maintenance system obviously records are all act standards will requires on employers to measure a record employee exposures to potentially harmful substances employers have the rights to present during the meeting as well as examine the records of the result the next one is workplace inspection workplace inspection that is the third step in accident incident reporting investigation that is inspection investigation is called inspection to enforce its standards osh person occupational health and safety persons uh, in your department is authorized to conduct workplace inspections every establishment covered by the act is subjected to inspections by the compliance safety and health officers who is chosen chosen for the knowledge and experience in the occupational health and safety field based on the finding of compliance officer inspections that is created on the workplace osh department is empowered to issue a cartitions a notice of proposed penalties cartitions inform the employees and employees of the regulations and standards alleged to have been violated and the proposed length of time set penalties is to be assessed or according to their abatement is to be imposed the employees will receive cartitions and notice of post penalty through certified mail by a certified company the by certified officer or by certified uh, any type of court after that the investigation process should be completed no we should next uh, going to next the next one is employers and employees in occupational health and safety occupational health and safety is the main thing of employers and employees employer what is employer again again we are discussing about employers and we are discussing about employees what is employer what is employee now we are discussing employees a persons company or organization that employ people employees should be individuals or organizations that has employees employees should be individual or an organization and employees someone who get to pay for the work for the person or company and employees someone who is hired and pay for the work there is a clear difference between these two employer is a dominated persons or a person who can hire the employee employer is also organization employees is a worker employee is the person who is working under employer where employer is a dominated person employer is a white collar person and employer employee is a worker 
the employer and employee's responsibilities and rights. Now we are looking on rights. What is the right of employer and employee? The duty of employer is to provide healthy and safe environment to the employee. Healthy and safe environment to the employee. On occupation. At the occupation. At the work site environment. At the workplace. It is the duty of employer. To provide a safe and helpful environment to the workers or employee. That is the main right of employer and employee. The next one. Rights and responsibilities of employees. Employees. The workers. What is the what are the rights and responsibilities of employees? There are some points. One is compensation equality. The second one is freedom to join the union. Safe workplace, harassment free workplace, non discrimination, family and medical leave, minimum wages, relations free workplace. Right violation assessment and investigations. Now we are taking a brief detail on employees rights. The employees rights are read the OSHAC posters detailed procedures at the job site. He know aware about occupational health and safety. Specifically, uh, he read the posters. He know the posters where the poster is located. He know it very well. He read it daily. That is the responsibility of employer. The next one is comply all applicable OSHA standards, sections, rules, and regulations. That is also necessary for occupation, health, and safety. Follow all employers' health and safety rules and regulations, which he taught you. And we are a use prescribed personal protective equipment while engaged in the workplace. Report has risk condition to your supervisor if you found during the work. Cooperate with OSH Act compliance officers conducting an inspection if he is required about occupational health and safety conditions at the workplace. Exercise your rights under the Act in a responsible manner. That is the main responsibility of employers. What is the right of employer? You know very well. Right now, after that. Now we are going to employer, right and responsibilities of employers. Safe conditions and work areas. Safe machinery is used. Or nice whole work. Provide information, instructions, training to employ. Make sure employees are aware of potential hazard associated with their work. Train new recruits. Proper supervision. Concerned with employees' health and safety, representative, make sure equipment materials are safe and safely stored. No, we are taking detail of employers. Employer have certain responsibilities and rights under that Act 1970, Occupational Health and Safety Act. These are met your general duty responsibility to provide work free, free from hazard environment. That are causing or likely to death or physical or any type of harmful activity free from all hazardous activities. Relation under the Act, employers should know, be familiar with the mandatory OSH Act standards, copy available to employ, inform employee about OSH Act, minimize work conditions to make sure they confirm the applicable standards. Minimize or reduce hazard. Make sure employees have and use safe tools and equipments, including for all personal protective equipments like uh, glasses, goggles, safety shoes, safety helmets, safety goggles. Use color codes, posters, labels, signs when needed to warn employees of potential hazard. Establish and update operating procedures and communicate them so that the employees follow safety and health requirements. Provide training by OSH Act standards like hazard communication, lead accident restriction, etc. Report to the nearest OSH Act officer within eight hours of any fatal accidents or illness or hospitalization of their workers. Keep OSH Act required records of the work related injuries or illness. Provide employees 
medical RxPoA records or their authorized representative. No discrimination against employees who properly exercise their rights under the Act. A bedside violations within the pre-subscribed methods. Seek advice of any off-site consultation when it is needed, like writing, calling, visiting, or nearest OSHAC area officer. Request and receive proper identifications of OSHAC compliance officers prior to inspections. Be advised to compliance officers of the reasons for an inspection. Have an opening and closing conference with the compliance officers uh, after investigations or after inspection. Comply with the applicable officer or section or any type of inspections according to rule and regulation. Take an advice or role in developing safety and health standards through nationally recognized standards. Setting organizations through evidence and view present in written or in hearing. Be assured of the confidentiality of any trade secrets observed by the OSH Act compliance officer during an inspection. These are the main responsibilities of and rights of employers. It should be organizations, it should be uh, a person who is looking the employer or who is totally boss of employers or who are hiring the employers. That is employer. No, we are going the next on the next slide. Responsibilities of employers under Act 1970. What is 1970 Act? 1970 Act is Occupational Safety and Health Act. According to that act, employers should exercise their rights and responsibilities, and employees also following these rights and responsibilities and working on the work side. A safe system way of performing the work, a safe place to perform the work, a safe equipment and machinery to perform the works. They must ensure works, colleagues and competent in the roles. They must carry out the relevant risk assessment. That is the all right now today's lectures. Uh, no, we are totally aware about occupational health and safety. That is occupational health and safety. Thank you so much. Thank you for your correspondence and thank you for your cooperation for listening to me. Our hearts that are filled a... with so much gratitude with your speaking prowess, our speaker of caliber engineer, Mohammed Wamek Ayas from the Pakistan. We thank, thank you. you for sharing your most valuable time and knowledge, especially on sharing with us the content of your topic, which is very beneficial, of course, to our audience and of course, to us viewers. Indeed, in this time of the pandemic, our health and safety is at risk. However, since we are individuals who have responsibilities to perform and the tasks that we are given to in view with our respective occupations, we have to take precaution and observe health and safety. Now, before we proceed with our quiz competition, I would like to encourage our continuously growing family, our participants, to please support the IGP by sharing IGP, tagging or mentioning your friends, especially if you are using Facebook as your platform tonight. We will give the e-certificate link in the comment box, and if you will face any problem, you can collect your e-certificates directly from our website, the www.eduigp.com. Again, www eduigp.com and after collecting your e-certificate do not forget to celebrate with igp by checking in using your facebook account as you have observed again we have been showing the certificate codes of the previous webinars that we have conducted you may use these codes to claim your certificates by accessing www.eduigp.com and without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's now proceed to our quiz competition
All right. Again, we are now with our quiz competition. And in this competition, we will be getting 10 winners or top 10 winners of the questions that we will be giving. And of course, we will be providing certificates of recognition to our winners for tonight. And you may now access our quiz by, um, of course, clicking www.s or slido.com using the code quiz IGP. We also posted our comment box, uh, in the comment box, uh, the link for our slido.com. As you can see, we have here the quiz completion certificate, an example of the quiz, which you will be receiving upon the completion or top by topping, of course, our quiz. I've been participating in this quiz for a long time right now, but I was not able to even rank in the top 10. Oh my gosh. So I hope I will also be topping this particular quiz. Now, right here in my screen or on my screen, I can see 29 participants, 30 users who, are, who have already joined. We have from the Department of Education using his DepEd account. From the Philippines, we have Hispano, Martinez, Montalvo, Alcaide, Garrigues, Candido, Clavicilia, Wapere. Mam Wapere is with us tonight. I think I'm having some names here, familiar names, who are also participating with us. We are now 36. I believe we can now start our quiz. I will be reading to you the quiz or the questions. And you may start clicking or you may also click your answers while I am reading the questions, right? We are seeing familiar names. Thank you so much to these familiar names who are continuously supporting IGP from the beginning up to present. We hope that our participants will also be joining us along the way as we grow continuously as a family of professionals from all around the world. All right, we have now the first question. O is occupational set limit for the industry standard. True or false? You may now click your answers and submit it. And we will see who will top this question. Poll is locked and the voting is officially closed. The 78% answered true. The correct answer is false. 23% got the correct answer. And let us see who topped this question. All right, we have Ronalyn Alcaide as our top score for this question. And to my surprise, I am now on top three. The very first time I ranked top three for the the times that this particular quiz is being conducted. Congratulations to me. <laughs> and of course, congratulations to our top 10, our leader, our, our leading individuals. Next question. Safety is a condition of being safe from undergoing or causing hurt, injury, or loss. Is it true or false? You may now start clicking your answer and submit it in 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Poll is locked. Voting is officially closed. 95% answered true. The correct answer is true. Now let us see who topped this question. All right, Ronalyn Alcaide is our first, the second, twice in a row. And I am top five. Congratulations again to myself. <laughs> I hope this will be consistent until the, the end of this quiz competition. All right, can we now proceed to our next question? Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Is it true or false? Right now in this pandemic, we are all responsible of our own safety and, of course, our health. As health is always our wealth. We cannot work without Good health. All right. 81% answered true. What is the correct answer? The correct answer is true. All right. Shall we now see who topped this question? Evelyn Wapere. Ma'am. Hello, Ma'am Evelyn. Ma'am Evelyn is, a, uh, is a, also a familiar name in this platform. Thank you so much, Ma'am, for supporting IGP. 
All right, Ma'am Evelyn is our top one. And I am still on top five. I hope I will maintain this rank. Prevention of injuries and accidents through reporting is called investigation. Is it true or false? Again, since we are in this time of pandemic, we have to always be careful and always observe our uh, good health and, of course, the safety of everybody. All right. 55% answered false. Let us see if it is the correct answer. The correct answer is true. My answer is wrong. <laughs> of course, I won't be on the top 10 now. Congratulations to Ma'am Evelyn Wapere twice in a row, ma'am. All right, let us proceed to the next question. Training should be on a different topic like hazard risk assessment, etc. Is it true or false? Right, submit your answers and we will see. Who is our top one for this question? I hope I got the correct answer. 86% answered true. It is the correct answer. All right, let's see our top five. Ma'am Ronaline Alcaide is now our top five. I'm still on my... I am not currently on rank 15 for me. <laughs> All right, next question. Employer is a person, company, or organization that employs people or employee to work. Is it true or false? Please, again, do not forget to like, share, and tag your friends. And share IGP, of course, to your friends, uh, family members, and colleagues. Share the information. The correct answer, oh, 100% answered true. The correct answer is true. Now let us see who topped this question. Ma'am Ronalyn Alcaide again topped this question. Congratulations, ma'am. Next question. Employees should be individual or organization that has employers. Is it true or false? Please share IGP to your friends, family members, and colleagues. Share the information. Share IGP for continuous innovation, inspiration, and social impact. Hashtag feed your skills. 88% answered true. The correct answer is false, of which only 12% got the correct answer. Now let us see who topped this question. Princess May P. Dizon is now the top one and i'm back on top five congratulations mom bison for topping this question question number eight an employee is someone who gets paid to work for a person or company an employee is someone who gets paid to work for a person or company true or false you may now submit your answers Poll is locked. Voting is now closed. Let us see. 98% answered true. Is it the correct answer? Yes, it is the correct answer. Congratulations again, Mom Princess May Dizon, for getting the correct answer. Oh, I can still see my name on the, letter, on the leaderboard. <laughs> Next, an employer is someone who hire and pay for their work. True or false? Our e-certificates will be available as soon as, yeah, the certificates will be available as soon as you may be able to um, access the links that we will be providing in our comment section. Now, false is 69% and true 31%. The correct answer is false, which is 69%. Now, let us see who ranked first for this question. Congratulations, Mom Julia Diokino. You are the top one for this question. And now, the tenth and the last question the duty of the employee is to provide a healthy and safe environment to the employees. True or false?
please take note of the codes that we are providing for the previous seminars or webinars that we have conducted for you to access our e-certificates and you may be able to claim it once you use those codes. 98% answered true for this question. Let us see. It is the correct answer. Now who topped this question? I hope I now I am now on the top 10. Mom Julia, congratulations, ma'am, for topping this question. Now let us see our top players for this round or quiz competition. Top one is Mom Julia Diokino, followed by Mom Campus. Mam Ma Anna Marie Joy Mercado is our top three. Top four is Mam Ma Visodiction. Hello, Mam Ma Visodiction. Fifth is Mam Ma Janelin Villar Visodiction. I think Mam Ma Janelin number four and number five is the same. Princess May Dizon. Hello, Mam. Ma Congratulations being on the top six. Leia Facunla is top seven. Evelyn Waper. Hello, Mam Ma Evelyn is on top eight. Um, Verica Luis. Abalgar is top 9 and top 10 is Miss Martinez. Congratulations to our top 10. And again, I am ranked 13 and I, <laughs> I haven't topped on the examination or this competition again. <laughs> I am in the top 13. At least I am now on top 13. Last time I was on the bottom 5. Congratulations everyone for winning. Congratulations for being participative, and thank you so much for joining our quiz competition. And now we will proceed to the question and answer portion with our speaker for tonight. All right, of course, the quiz winners or the winners of this competition will be receiving... So again, earlier I've said that our quiz winners will also be receiving certificates as an award of our recognition <coughs> for topping the quiz competition. And now we would like to request our and encourage also our participants to key in or comment now your questions for our speaker for tonight, Engineer Wamek Ayaz. You may now start. Um, writing your questions using our comment box section and we will be showing the questions here in our live stream right we are seeing questions now in our youtube comment box from mom evelyn Wapera. hello mom evelyn good evening engineer good evening how is ergonomics related to safety? Ergonomics is a surrounding thing related to your workplace. That is the environment. That is the, your whole related activity. Uh, mostly it's related to your HSC, occupation. Uh, that is not related to occupational health. That is related to HSC, HSE. E stands for environment. The ergonomics is related to environment. That is the old system of occupation, health, and safety. That is the old system of health and safety. That's all, please. All right. Thank you so much, engineer, for that comprehensive answer. Next, engineer, we have another question from Ken Dem. Is COVID-19 under biological hazard or chemical hazard? COVID-19 is a biological hazard, not a chemical hazard. Uh, mostly for biological hazard, 
वो यूज अबोलॉजिकल आइटम्स इन दैट सीन बॉलॉजिकल आइटम्स रिलेटेड टू वायरस इंसेक्ट्स रोडेंट्स अ डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ बॉलॉजिकल बॉलॉजिकल आइटम्स एंड वो यूज टू केमिकल टू रिमूव द बॉलॉजिकल कंटेंट्स दैट इज आल्सो कंसर्न विद केमिकल द केमिकल रिमूव द बॉलॉजिकल आइटम्स एंड इट इज अ बॉलॉजिकल कंटेंट नॉट अ केमिकल कंटेंट All right. Okay. Thank you so much, engineer. Again, so for clarification, COVID nineteen is under biological hazard and not chemical hazard. Thank you so much, engineer. Now, do we have Thank another you. question from our viewers or participants for tonight? Any question? Clarification. Another question, sir. From Mam Ida Ramirez Martinez, hello engineer. How can accident be prevented in the workplace and improve one's safety? Actually, accident should be prevented through proper <coughs> record keeping and proper managing the whole system. <coughs> If you organize the whole system at your workplace, specifically arrange the total, specifically arrange the total uh, atmosphere. at your or your workplace if you arrange the separate system of your vehicles or uh, uh, for the pedestrians and the work area should be separate then you can totally refuse the accident <clears throat> it is the best way to prevent from accident in the workplace to arrange separate each and every task that is the best activity to remove the accident thank Not you so much engineer Yes, thank you so much, engineer. Indeed, prevention is better than cure. So we always have to make sure that our place or our workplace is in the best safe condition. All right. Another question, engineer, from Ken Dem. What are the hazards under OSH? And since others includes ergonomic hazards, especially in the field of education. The first, uh, the first one is. according to education point of view i want to tell you about that our employers and employees should be trained and training through education is the good way to produce their best successful life or best successful practice that is the best way to uh, to introduce the uh, introduce this person about osh act according to osh act under hazardous condition osh is an occupation safety and health act it's remove hazard risk and danger relating to your workplace relating to your safety relating to your health so keeping in mind it is a activity which is used or performed to remove the hazards or risk or any type of danger so that's our occupation health and safety and the knowledge which is provided according to occupation health and safety it is necessary for us uh, to learn to achieve if we we'll learn or achieve according to that knowledge we we'll take education that education teach us how to work how to live in hazardous atmosphere how to work in hazardous atmosphere that is the technical education and it is necessary for us uh, to know about occupation health and safety Thank you so much, engineer. I agree with you, engineer, that we always have to take into consideration the things, especially in the edu in the field of education. In the Philippines right now, engineer, just to share our context here in the Philippines, we are also preparing our schools for the up upcoming um, face to face or limited face to face classes, and that is why one of the priorities of our RPMS is, of course. to focus That's on promoting safety and um mm -hmm. safety and of course a secure and safe place for our learners and that is why we are doing our best to evaluate the schools and of course we are also doing our best to perform the best of our abilities to make sure that our institutions are safe and secure for our learners so thank you so much engineer mm -hmm. now do we have another question for our speaker for tonight Do we have another question?
I think I think I'm no longer seeing questions from our YouTube platform. From uh, how about from our Facebook platform? Do we have questions for our speaker? Actually, our topic for tonight is very interesting, especially at this time of this pandemic that all of us have to always be careful and always be mindful of our safety and, of course, of our health. Do we have more questions for our speaker? Please don't miss the chance to question our speaker of caliber who is very knowledgeable in this kind of field. Okay. Okay, I think we no longer have questions for you, Engineer. Thank you so much, Engineer, for sharing your valuable time and expertise, especially about occupational health and safety. Your expertise is indeed very um, observed. And of course, it's very obvious that our participants have also learned a lot from you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let us give a resounding round so of applause to our speaker for tonight, Engineer Muhammad Wamek Ayaz. Thank you so much, thank Engineer. You so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Alaj. Uh, uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, all the participants and speaker, I want to say thank you for your cooperation. And thank you, IGP, for providing me that platform. That's good. Thank you. There you have it. Thank you so much, Engineer, for um, giving us your valuable time and, of course, your expertise. Now, to our participants, participants, please do um, be reminded that we will be providing e-certificates for this particular session, our 388th um, webinar. And, of course, we will be providing you free certificates or free e-certificates, which will be accessed using our official website, the www.eduigp.com. I think our code will be provided by tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, we have here the today's certification process. All right. Of course, our program management team is doing their best, especially Sir Kamrul, to provide as much as possible the um, certification codes for us to claim our certificates. Now, as you can see here, for the code for today's, topic occupational health and safety it is igp3976 again igp3976 without a code you will not be able to claim your e-certificate however by knowing this code igp3976 for today's topic you may be able to claim or access your e-certificates anytime using our official website which is www.eduigp.com and of course, make sure that upon logging into our official website, you, you are to create or you are going to create your account, your personal account, all right, for you to be eligible of the e-certificates that we will be providing you. Again, our code for today's topic, occupational health and safety is IGP3976. Just log in to www.eduigp.com and follow the easy steps of claiming your certificate. We have already posted the link for today's certification in our YouTube comment section, and we will also be posting it in our Facebook um, comment section. All right. Once again, congratulations to our winners for today's quiz competition. A big thank you to our speaker for tonight, Engineer Wamek Ayas. And of course, a big thanks, heartfelt thanks in behalf or on behalf of IGP to our participants who stayed with us from the beginning up to the end of our session tonight. We hope to see you again tomorrow. We hope to see you in the many more webinars and trainings that IGP will be offering our participants. Once again, thank you so much for being with us. Share the information. Let us continue unfitting our skills. Let us continue to innovate, provide, and give inspiration, and create a large-scale impact, not just to the society, but also to the world. Once again, I am Alger Mordeno Esquera from the Philippines, your host for tonight. See you.